today's topic is about monitoring your robotic fleet. That is basically how you can make production and production equipment information available all over your network without actually going around and inventing and checking up on your robot locally. And for this, KUKA actually offers two slightly different solutions. We have since many years, one product for this called KUKA Device Connector. And there is a separate webinar available on our YouTube channel on KUKA Device Connector, which is a software installed on your robot, which allows you to pull data freely from the robots. But on the other end, then you have to build any user GUI by yourself. So the alternative is what I'm going to present today, which is our QCA IQOT solution, which is an out of the box, ready to work solution directly with a minimum effort of installing it. So today's focus of that purpose will be on our IQOT solution. Uh, so to monitor and supervise your production and keep track of uptime and efficiency is a central part of profit and productivity. And by being able to do so, you are always, as a supervisor or a monitorer, always up to date with the production data. You are actually able to increase your productivity and efficiency since you are now provided with real-time data already. And you get a real tool which directly will alert you for any events directly to your emails or web phone or whatever. And all this is one software which we call IQOT. And inside of IQOT, there are a number of mod modules, which are all included, that I'll shortly go through. But IQOT is also something that is being constantly developed. But right now, we have these modules listed here. And that is what we call IQOT Basic. And IQOT Basic is actually free of charge. We call it the freemium level. And that platform is actually delivered or ready to deliver with each new robot Coca supplies today. You only need to order it from us as an additional service, but the price is actually for free this level. Now, as I mentioned, we are planning to increase the functionality of these IQOT models and add new models as well during the coming year. That is what we see on the right hand side here. That are modules such as predictive maintenance, efficiency monitoring, load analysis, backup management, and process data aggregation. Process data aggregation is how to quality monitor your production. You can use your own defined variables or quality variables that you can catch from the robot or the robot process and monitor them and keep track of them inside of IQOT. And as these new models are introduced, they will for basically the whole next year be included in the freemium version for free. Therefore, you, any user can evaluate the functionality of this 
and also give us feedback on them so we can adopt them and improve on them. Uh, and even in the future releases, even on the freemium level, if you don't choose to go for the advanced functions, also the freemium levels will be improved, like new data points for the conditional assets manager, the integration, tighter integration into our expert site. Expert is our FAQ knowledge database website. We can do upload and trigger traces that is the plan which we can't do right now and so on a lot of them and they will show up gradually over the year so let's have a look specifically in iq ot and how it actually looks like and the first part we will see have a look at is the asset manager and this is a screenshot but there we actually see all an overview of all our robots. And let me just switch application here and show you the real thing instead. And let, hang on while I switch application here and actually go to the IQOT webpage. So I think now you should see my screen and I have logged in to our demo website of IQOT. And here I can see a complete list of my robots or KUKAS demo robots in this case listed. And of course we see there are 123 robots and they are all sorted into their robotic name, but also to location or sublocation even, and so on. And I can use these to filter and sort robots. So there is a filter at the top where I can, for example, choose a specific site. Let's go to our head office, Augsburg, for example. And I could add additional site or additional property filters to my, and share the, save the filter if I like. And here we see also the connection status, the running status of our robots. So I get a quick and very easy overview of the robots directly. I can even download a dump, which just gives me an Excel file of what robots I have. And there is also a help file for this webpage, which is documentation. And on this asset manager, I see the mix of robots, what operating mode mix these robots are, which system version of system software they are running right now. So immediately I get a very good overview, but I can also dive into one of the robots. Let's take this one and get a direct overview of the status of that robot where we see the robot, the details of the robot itself, what operating mode it is in, if the brake test is active and if it's passed and so on. The ca robot cabinet, its IP address, its mother mod module and so on. And finally, also a look on the software details where I see exactly which KSS software it's running. So this gives you immediately quite a good overview of the robot fleet. So if we now jump further, and the next part is actually the messages where we can see directly all the alarm messages and support them and even get notification, an email when an e alarm happens. So again, let's have a look at the real thing. And go to messages. 
And here we have messages. And now, since I was having a look at the Heller robot, which we looked at earlier, it remains that filter active. And I can here say a time filter where I have a look at all the messages we have. And here we see that there is a active and pending alarm message, status message. But I can, of course, just filter on the different message types like this. And even if I go to my fleet and do it like this, I get all the messages for all the robots instead. Since I now haven't done a robotic filter, I, the filter is now Germany Augsburg instead. And if I cancel that, again, I will get the messages out of all my robots of my entire fleet. And using the message tab here, I can set up rules for who should get the alerts when a message gets. And I can create my own new message notification rules here and choose to subscribe to them. So different types of messages can go to different users and so on. Uh, moving on to the next module. Is the security monitor. Did I jump one now? No. The security monitor allows us to do a health check on the security of the robot. That is virus scanners, uh, open ports, admin logins, and so on. And we can do that on a robot level or the entire fleet level, of course. So again, let's have a look at our the real life and right now we are looking at all the robots and we can see that in our demo robots we are quite slack regarding our securities we see that the for example the antivirus is inactive in 95 percent of our robots which of course is not a perfect picture and again, I can now use this to break down the different versions. I can go into one specific robot. Let's just see, choose whatever. And let's then do the same filtering we did before. We have a look at our Augsburg robots instead. And have a look at them and browse through the robots here, we can. And when we go into one specific robot, we get a very detailed documentation of what is installed on these robots, what software packages and what options are actually installed on these robots, what open ports, are set in Windows. So we get a very good network sharing of this, which is really interesting for example, IT departments. The next module I wanted to discuss with you is, is the change log. And in the change log, we can monitor whatever changes has been done to our robot in terms of configuration or application. So again, let's have a look at this and we will go to the change log. And again, here is the time filter, really useful. Since I now had the filter set to a specifically one robot here. Of course, I can look again, look at the wider scale and pull up the changes of all the robots, depending on what filter I set up here. And here we actually see what cabinet, what changes has been done to this robot here and the cabinet or the technology package. 
software installation applications and these are the system wise changes that we have done but i can also track the robot program changes which has been none obviously for this specific robot i can also manually create a manual event here and insert a manual event if i like or comment one of these events and give a reason to them so we can follow up why this event was actually done. So this gives us a very close and online view of what is happening in the production. If I get a product, suddenly a process problem, perhaps someone has done some changes to the application software. This is easily checked directly here now. Another module which a maintenance engineer would find really useful is that we can actually force the robot to create what is called the KRC Diag field, which is a dump of all the diagnostics of the robot. And when and if there is a problem with the robot, our support very often asks for this specific file. And up till now, the only version to do that is to go out to the robot, use software, connect and create the diag, pull it out, go back to your office and email it. With this functionality, instead directly here in IQOT, we can actually order the robot to create a Diag file, which I will not do right now. So let's instead have a look at our robots in Augsburg and see that, okay, there has been created some Diag files on this robot here, which I can now then download, or I can even directly from here to a remark on that file and create a new service case. That is then an email to our hotline is created where you can describe the fault and the Diag file would be immediately inclu included. So that makes it significantly easier to get the support number running and providing our support with the correct info in the initial mail, which would save a tremendous amount of time. There's even a robot detail page, which we call condition monitoring. And here we can actually track the condition of the robot. It helps us in fault tracing, having a look at trends and robot irregularities, perhaps the energy consumption is going up. So again, let's have a look at what this looks like here. And as you now already understood, there is, and let's now just go back and pick a robot, which is actually up and running and in an active working state. So we will search for connected robots, which are actually running and connected. So we get some valid data. Uh, let's take this one here, for example. And then we do, then go to the condition monitoring of this robot. And here I can choose whatever data I wish to have a look at and over what time period. Let's take the last three months and we see this was again a little bit poor example. The, this robot has been in operating mode external for the last three months to 
and we can graph a number of parameters which these robots are using. Right now, the robot runtime, the partition of the C disk, perhaps not that interesting, in the operating mode, but if we have a instead a look at this drop down list, we can see that this is really a lot of information available here. I can have a look at the connection status and the working state as well for this robot. And then immediately we get a graph of the working state here and the connection status. We see it has been connected over here for a longer period of time. And I can also do that some kind of filtering for the cabinet where, for example, energy consumption is a pretty interesting graph to look at, which we see, okay, that is extremely low since it's basically been standing still for most of the time. And here we can track and trace and detect anomalies when we look at them. All in all, we think that this should be very useful for each of our users. Let me just try to share the correct screen here. And of course, finally, and the last module I would talk about in here is the maintenance manager where we can see and schedule maintenance for the robots uh, in question. So let's just have a look at that one live as well. So we'll keep our robot we chose before and have a look at the maintenance tab. And again, we see that in our tech center here, in our grob cell, we are not really up to date because there are three services that are actually overdue on this robot and with quite a lot so this was not the most flattering example we could choose but i also get a history here of which robots are done with the comment of who have who has done them and i can also look a little bit into the future and i see that in september two services for this robot are due and of course, if I now instead go to the entire fleet, I then see that in total for all by 123 robots, there are 91 overdue services, 314 which are due at various dates in the future. And I get a history of the done maintenance efforts to them. So this is a powerful tool to plan your maintenance to your robots. Who can use this IQO team? Where is it available? Well, actually it is available directly on the shop floor. You can include these screens because these are pre-made screens, which we see directly, if you like, in your local HMI, which allows the local operators to direct access statuses and messages of the robot in clear text and they can be alerted uh, whenever an event occurs but of course even on a higher level on a factory supervisory level they can be included in a SCADA system or a maintenance system or made available on any computer there and again here is another level of information useful perhaps uh, like a uh, change history or version history and moving up it is since this is a web-based system it's actually available on all levels and all the different users at the different levels have different needs of this information and that makes it a really flexible tool on an office level uh, production planning maintenance planning they make real good use of looking at the status, the maintenance, scheduling of the robots. And as you saw, I'm not limited to one site. I can bring together several sites in one view, which makes it even useful and available on a corporate level. And 
since it's web-based, it's actually available on basically any platform you choose. Of course, on any, any office equipment like laptops or computers, but it can also be integrated in local operator screens, or you can even use a personal device like a smartphone or a tablet of some kind. So this information would be available wherever you are, actually. So what is the architecture of this? How, how do we get this running? Well, we need to do a, a few things. So IQOT is a cloud-based solution from KUKA. So we need to connect the assets, the robots, to the cloud in some way. And for that, we need a gateway, which can be either a piece of hardware, which you can buy or rent from us, or you can do it in a virtual machine with a piece of software. And then the cost is nothing. But let's have a look at one step at a time. So again, the application is IQOT, which on, is free of charge. And the core applications here of IQOT Basic is the modules we went through today here. During the year, at the end of the year, we are also going to introduce the IQOT Advanced, and they will actually be introduced during the year uh, as they get launched and ready. And up till October next year, these modules will be available in the basic and freemium level for your evaluation possibilities. So there are already some planned modules which I haven't described here, like predictive maintenance, which is condition-based maintenance instead of strict calendar-based maintenance. Efficiency monitoring, such as energy consumption per cycle or monitor cycle time per piece or something like this. There will also be a load analysis. That means that we can do a load test of the robot and check the current loads of the robot to see that our settings are in line with the reality. We can do backup management of the robot over IQOT, and again, we can collect process data to do quality assurance, for example. This is hosted on a cloud provide, public cloud provided by KUKA, and hosted by KUKA. You can also do it on a private cloud, but then you have to host it and set up the IT requirements and the IT structure for this on your own. When we look at the public cloud, the question of data security is, is something that has to be addressed. And with this solution, we actually fulfill the highest and strictest and string, most stringent demands of security. Uh, it is a cloud server which is hosted in a European uh, data center, which means that it's also European laws that are applicable for it. It uses the highest standard of encryption and authentication and follows ISO standard 2701 in terms of there, and it's built on Microsoft Azure. Now, we only handle KUKA robot variables in this. And in fact, we are this communication is one way. The cloud is only collecting data. We do not have the possibility from the cloud service to go in and change the operating state of the robot, for example. And since we are a European company with a European server base. We have strict GDPR compliance on this. We do not do any traceback of user or production quality. We can't do it. We do absolutely not 
share the data on our cloud service with any third party. So you, as customer, are the owner of the data your equipment generates, and that can not, uh, it's not allowed to be spread by KUKA or any others. So there is no real value of this for any external partners. Now, as I mentioned, to connect the robots to the cloud, you will need some kind of gateway. And the easiest way for many is, of course, a physical device. It's a small black box, which is supported, can be bought or by, from KUKA, and is serviced by KUKA. And it meets all the highest security standard and has integrated firewalls and so on. Uh, sorry, but of course it can also be done as a virtual device. That means as a software service running on a virtual machine on a computer setup, which is a cost-free product. But on, but then a few things are left to you as a customer. For example, setting, uh, providing this server which on which this software should run and with firewall settings and so on. And the third option is actually to use third-party products as well, which is also quite available. We have some recommendations, as you see, on hardware, but we support external hardware as well. And finally, when we go to the robots itself, they of course need to be connect physically connected to the network. So we have provide a shop floor network checklist to make this one uh, work. And you need to network it between this gateway and the robots itself. And finally, there are some notes. Uh, this is this IQOT functionality works with the operating system of the robot KSS 8.3 or higher. Each robot needs something called KUKA device connector pre-installed. That's not as complicated as it sounds because our robots are always today delivered with this software pre-installed. And the only and the way you get access to this IQOT is to actually to on my.kuka, there's something called the marketplace. And there we can make an order of IQOT which is the order sum is zero. The only cost will be the potential gateway you want to add to this. And you will then get this as a service, a tenant as we call them. So let's just summarize this a little bit because we are nearing the end of this webinar here. Uh, IQOT is and will be a very effective tool for you to increase your productivity. Make sure that you don't have any security issues and make your maintenance efforts more effective by be making them more planable. But it's also a tool for effective troubleshooting. I mean, since this can connect directly to our hotline, to our expert site, you will save a whole lot of time and when there are some more complex issues you more quickly provide the data which we as our customer service at KUKA will require and you actually get a complete history of messages which are saved for the whole lifetime of the robot which you actually do not have locally And of course, you get a very clear overview of the complete robot fleet, whether you've installed one, 10 or 100 robots. And you can quickly see what, a, what robots have certain software versions, what options they are installed. And it simplifies your interaction with KUKA since it is connected to our knowledge base and customer database. And of course, we have some really interesting 
future models coming out over the coming year, which is predictive maintenance, as I spoke of before. Process data aggregation is probably quite interesting for most of you. Backup management, energy monitoring, but also some basic functionalities, like it's possible to that an alarm creates an automatic deal uh, ticket at our hotline, if you like. Uh, integration of my.coca in directly inside of here. This our platforms will grow together to get one smooth operating. Uh, experience for you as a customer. Industrial Intelligence